one of the most enduring images of my life is that of a woman running across the road towards me while curiously unzipping and then completely taking off her skirt. She appeared to be moving in slow motion. I was lying in the middle of a steep suburban road trying to get up. My vision was blurring at the time, but I felt a strange sense of peace with warmth flooding down my body. I didn't realize it at that moment, but when I looked down, I knew that warmth was a torrent of blood. I'd just been hit by a car on my bike and would soon need two sets of surgery and 350 stitches in my face alone. I had a fractured skull, a broken wrist, and had lost a lot of the skin on the right side of my face, including my right eyelids. The woman knelt behind me, wrapping her skirt firmly around my head to stop the flow of blood. Despite the fact that I was looking a little worse for wear, having a bad face day, perhaps, <laughs> she didn't hesitate. She was driven by a powerful human instinct we all have, which is to give for the benefit of others. Today, one of the stories we tell ourselves is that there's an assumption of selfishness in the world and that human beings seek to maximize their own self-interest over others. Well, I think it's time for a new story. Our old one is bullshit, right? And it's simply not true. Every day, I'm increasingly encouraged by the image of the woman running across the road and what it represents for us. I'm optimistic because she is not unique, and every day we see many examples of courage and humanity right across the globe. In our hearts, we know that each of us is ultimately connected. We know and want what's right for each other. What's right for me is what's right for we. But despite our desire for collective happiness, every day we're increasingly confronted with the effects of resource scarcity, climate change, civil unrest, poverty, and an increasing number of people are being left behind. We have just over 7 billion people sharing our planet today. While a billion people are going to bed hungry every night, and 2 billion people have not enough clean water to drink, so here's our dilemma. If seven of us went out for dinner tonight and one of us at that table had no food and two had no water or wine, we would share. And with a proportionately equal number of people going without globally, our hearts want to do just that. But the issue and the challenge is we feel helpless to catalyze the scale of change needed in the world. Today, I'm a hunter, a hunter of ways to rapidly create positive impacts for people, planet, and profit. I work with entrepreneurs and startups, business leaders, and increasingly, I like to create strategies for cities, sectors, and global system change. Every day in my work, I come across an increasing number of people who want to help somehow but wonder how on earth we're going to manage all of this. But let's not get too down on ourselves. It's fantastic, for example, to see a growing number of philanthropists leveraging their wealth and networks, but also thinking differently beyond existing charitable models and creating entirely new paths for change. Then there's the growing army of celebrity activists, including the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, or Angelina Jolie. Entrepreneurs and businesses are also joining this army and seeing the commercial opportunity to create new ventures that put people and planet right alongside profit. The kickoff of the B Team by Jochen Zeitz and Sir Richard Branson represents a new and exciting area. The B Team is seeking a bold new agenda for business, a plan B where plan A, business as usual, is no longer an option and frankly not acceptable.
I helped an amazing team of people all around the world develop this agenda, an agenda to change the role of business and ignite business leaders everywhere to work towards a plan B. While I'm driven and passionate about my work, if I'm honest with you today, my aim is to design myself out of a role as rapidly as possible. We simply won't need sustainability strategists in the future. My dream is that we'll have the models, mindsets and approaches built into our DNA. So how might we do this? Well, to create rapid change, we need scalable models to quickly transform our cities, our businesses, sectors and infrastructure. We also need to work as a collective and highly targeted unit. We can do this, but we've got to change gears to get the pace we need. From my experience, I believe that if we each become systems thinkers, then we can unlock points of leverage, blowing our current approach totally out of the water and finding one small change in one thing that will create a big change in everything. So let me give you a practical example of what I mean and what it looks like to integrate systems thinking into company strategy. So if you were a company that sold, say, soap, and you wanted to double your profits, but also have social impact, you might choose to have a sexy, sultry ad campaign. So you could donate a proportion of your increased profit to local community. While of some merit, if you applied an alternative systems thinking lens, you might map out all of the issues and opportunities and quickly discover that you could solve a significant social challenge. That challenge being the number of children dying from preventable illnesses around the globe from lack of hand washing. From your mapping out of all the issues, you would discover a leverage point being a strategic partnership with governments and health agencies. That partnership would give you increased reach to a billion new consumers across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. So not only would you reduce the respiratory illnesses and diarrhea, the world's two biggest causes of child mortality, but it, you would also significantly increase your profits beyond those which you previously imagined. If you think this sounds too blue sky, you'll be interested to know that Unilever are currently doing just this. So the concept of leverage is one of the most powerful in all of science. Archimedes proved the law of the lever and applied the mathematical principles in a variety of inventions all around the world. He famously said, give me a place to stand and with a lever I will move the world. So leverage points are transformational areas. I call them acupressure points. They're areas where we can unlock systems, creating rocket-fueled pathways for change. Importantly, though, they can only be discovered using a systems thinking lens, as we need to understand all of the parts and interconnections and how they relate to each other in order to find them. So systems thinking, then, is really a vantage point it's the vantage point where we can see a whole red web of relationships. Issues are seen in a large context of patterns unfolding over time. So if we want to truly re-engineer our current approach, it's increasingly apparent that we need to move beyond making feel-good offerings and deepen our understanding of the systems and structures and causes of our current situation. This new understanding will prompt the right questions so to mobilize fit-for-purpose solutions. The quality of our answers will be in direct proportion to the quality of our questions. Einstein, he had the right idea. He, he had a few of them when he said, if I had 60 minutes to solve a problem and my life depended on it, I would spend 55 minutes determining the right question to ask. Once I had that question, I know that I could solve that problem within five minutes. So let's now extract the best learnings from these concepts. It's by thinking in new ways 
that each of us can harness our full potential to create the more beautiful, equitable world. We all want this world, and we want what's best for each other, just like the woman in the skirt, or without the skirt, as the case may be. Starting from today, I invite you to apply three simple new frames of thinking to help guide your now laser-like focus. One, think in systems. That's the large-scale macro environment all around you. Two, think about the future, seeing opportunities and patterns rather than discrete issues or events. Three, engage others in doing the same. This will result in a deeply shared, well-tested view of the future. By applying this thinking, you will find the best opportunities, the most impactful opportunities that are already within your sphere of influence. When we all do this, we will change our story, becoming a collective and highly targeted unit. Then maybe, just maybe, together, we will change the world. Thank you.